Hi, Stu Schwartz from MasterMathMentor.com. This is video AB14. The topic is linear approximations and it covers the AB manual page 68. This shape is called an icosahedra. It is a 24-sided polygon. It certainly looks like a circle, but it isn't. This we know is a circle. Watch what happens when we compare it to the icosahedra. When the number of sides becomes this large, the length of the sides become much smaller. The calculus definition of a circle is simply a polygon whose number of sides approaches infinity, and thus whose length of sides approach zero. This phenomenon occurs quite a bit in real life. Examine guardrails on the side of a curving road and you will see that they do not match the, cur the curve of the road, but in reality are a series of straight line rails. Since the straight lines are numerous, they appear to curve. This is the path of a wooden roller coaster. It's a series of peaks and valleys, and notice it appears that there is quite a bit of curvature to the path. But in reality, this is how the roller coaster is constructed. The blue dots simply represent lengths of track, and they are not curves, they are straight lines. Notice that when we get to the peaks and valleys, the straight lines are very short. This simulates the idea of a curve. Suppose we have a function y equals f of x as shown on the graph in red. We have a point on that curve a f of a. At that point we construct the green tangent line using the derivative. Let's call that function y equals l of x. Let's examine our point slope formula which we know is y minus y1 equals m quantity x minus x1. However, the point x1, y1 is the same in this situation as the point a, f of a. In this case, y is equal to l of x, and m, which is the slope of the line, is f prime of a. So our point slope formula becomes l of x minus f of a equals f prime of a times the quantity x minus a. And therefore, l of x is equal to f of a plus f prime of a times the quantity x minus a. What does this complicated looking expression mean? If we have a value of k that is very close to a, then f of k is approximately equal to L of k. So the line gives a good approximation for the function. And this is called using linear approximation to f at x is equal to a. Look at the graph again. We now have this value of k, which is fairly close to a we would like to find the value of f of k, the red dot. But it may be difficult to find this value. f might be a complicated looking expression. However, if we use the line, which is always an easy looking expression, we can find the value of the line at x is equal to k and realize that it will be very close to the value of f of k. That is linear approximation. Note that a requirement for this is that the value of k be very close to a. We moved k a little bit further to the right. And notice how now the value of f of k and l of k are starting to diverge. No longer is 
L of k a good approximation for f of k. Problem 1 reads, use the linear approximation for f of x equals the cube root of x at x equals 8 to approximate the cube root of 8.1. As we can see on the graph, we have the red curve f of x equals the cube root of x, and we have the point on that curve 8, 2. We also see the tangent line. We want the equation of that line. So we know that f prime of x is equal to 1 over 3x to the 2 thirds, and therefore f prime of 8 is equal to 1 twelfth. We also know that f of 8 is equal to 2. So our tangent line is simply y minus 2 is equal to 1 twelfth quantity x minus 8. This gives us y is equal to x over 12 plus 4 thirds. And I choose to write this as y equals x plus 16 over 12. So the green line has equation y equals x plus 16 over 12. And therefore, at x is equal to 8.1, our approximation is y equals 24.1 over 12, which is 2.0083. So our approximation of the cube root of 8.1 is 2.0083 because 8.1 is very close to 8. You might wonder, why not just take the cube root of 8.1 on a calculator? Why go through this routine to get an approximation when we can get the real answer? Remember that calculus is quite old. Calculators are relatively new. Back in the 17th and 18th century, there was no way to actually do a calculation like the cube root of 8.1 without a lot of messy work. This was a very simple way, using just long division, to get an approximation for the cube root of 8.1 and since 8.1 is very close to 8, this approximation should be very close. We will talk about errors in the next slide. In problem 2, you're instructed, using a calculator, find the error in using the linear approximation to f of x equals e to the x at x is equal to 0 to approximate the fourth root of e. Sounds complicated. Let's see what's happening graphically. We graph in red y equals e to the x. We also graph the tangent line to that curve at x is equal to 0 in green. We see that at x is equal to 0 0.25, the value of the function and the value of the approximation are very close to each other. It is shown in a circle. The error is the difference between those two points. So solving, f prime of x is of course equal to e to the x. f prime of 0 is 1 and f of 0 is 1. So our tangent line is y1 minus 1 is equal to 1 quantity x minus 0 or y equals x plus 1. So at x is equal to 0 0.25, e to the 1 quarter power is approximately equal to y, which is 1.25. Now using the calculator, the fourth root of e is 1.284. So the error is simply the difference in the two values which is 1.284 minus 1.25, which is 0 0.034. So what this means is that if we use the easy calculation for the tangent line, y equals x plus 1, to calculate the fourth root of e, we would only be off by 0 0.034.
Problem 3 reads, for the tangent line to f of x equals x squared minus 3x plus 5 at x is equal to 4, to have an error of at most 0 0.1 in approximating f of 4 plus h, what is h? For many students, this type of problem is difficult. It is not like previous problems, where you are asked to find the derivative or find the equation of the tangent line. For those, you had a specific blueprint of what to do. Here, no one tells you what to do. Look back at the graph on the previous problem. The circled section represents the error in using the tangent line approximation than actually using the real value. That is the error, and that's what we want to calculate. So let's find the tangent line to f of x equals x squared minus 3x plus 5 at x is equal to 4. We know that f prime of x equals 2x minus 3, and f prime of 4 is equal to 5, and f of 4 is 9. So our tangent line is y minus 9 is equal to 5, quantity x minus 4, and y equals 5x minus 11. So the error is simply the value of f at 4 plus h minus the linear approximation at 4 plus h. This is f of 4 plus h minus 5 quantity 4 plus h minus 11. And we are interested in the value of h where that expression is less than 0 0.1. f of 4 plus h is 4 plus h squared minus 3 quantity 4 plus h plus 5. Continuing, we get minus 20 minus 5h plus 11 and that has to be less than 0 0.1. Expanding, we get h squared plus 8h plus 16 minus 12 minus 3h minus 15 minus 5h plus 11 is less than 0 0.1. And miraculously, just about everything cancels out, and we're left with h squared is less than 0 0.1, meaning that h is less than 0 0.316. So this means that if we wanted to find f of any value from 4 to 4.316, our error in using the tangent line approximation would be less than 0 0.1.